You know, there's just something magical about benchmarking and tuning a system. Might be one of my more favorite things to do with a computer. I am the Graying Tech, a gaming insider. If you'd like to learn how to improve your gaming performance, start now by clicking that like button, maybe even the subscribe. This right here is Project 7. Today, I'm going to show you how I do my initial benchmark runs in order to diagnose and know exactly how this system is going to perform. Because you never know where you're going to head, you don't actually know where you have been. In other words, as you are making these adjustments, you'll never know if you really are getting better performance. You see, this is a computer system. There are parts and components, and they all interact together in order to give you great gaming performance. But just because you modify one doesn't mean things are going to get better. In fact, a lot of the times, if you change just a few settings, performance will actually get worse. And you'll never know that if you don't have a good initial benchmark. So let's jump onto the actual computer itself. I'm going to walk you through what you need to change and how to get good, consistent benchmarks so that you can know exactly how to start dialing in your system. Now, before you actually go establish your baseline benchmarks, I need you to do something. I need you to play a game. I know this is going to be really hard for you, but you got to play for at least 15 minutes or render something for 15 minutes. Run Synbench for 15 minutes. You need to get heat inside of your components because your thermal paste that you put on your CPU needs to firm up. It needs to set. It needs to lack of a better term, melt a little bit onto the components so that proper heat transfer can occur. Same thing with your GPU and your graphics card. The thermal pads that are in here need to heat up in order to properly set and properly transfer the heat out of the component to the cooling solution itself. So 15 minutes, let the system get hot and then take another 15 minutes, power off, don't touch it, just let it cool down. Let it get back to its normal state, and now you are ready to actually benchmark. If you don't do this, your initial results are actually going to skew lower because you're getting less thermal performance out of your thermal solution, and that's going to skew your baseline. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is modify your task manager. Up here to start up, I want you to disable anything and everything that has been installed in this area. Why? We're trying to reduce how much things actually start on the system so that we don't have interference. We want to see our processes and our memory kind of as low as we can possibly get them so that things aren't interfering. This variation can cause you to think that something might be wrong with the system if things are kicking off at the wrong time. So this eliminates those potential interfering elements and now we can move on to the actual benchmarks. The two that I would highly recommend you download are right here. This is Performance Test. This is from Passmark. This is 3D Mark. Both of these are free, at least free to try. These are very good utilities that are going to tax your system in various different ways. Let's take a quick look here at the Passmark Performance Test first. You see you have a 30-day evaluation. Simply click Continue. I do like this little animation that they have as they're kind of grabbing everything. And there. So we can see four hard drives, our North Bridge, chip, GPU, and our RAM. You get good temperature information, and it's as simple as simply clicking this Run Benchmark. This is going to help establish a baseline for your system as well. Now, this was the baseline that I got. I did have XMP enabled and specifically turned on PCIe 4. For my NVMe, very important because those are elements that you have paid for, but you do need to enable in most Intel based motherboards. So here you can see my percentile 99, 99th percentile, which is extremely high as you would expect out of a new gaming PC with the CPU being the one lone item that's not as powerful as what else is on the market. You can submit this as a baseline to pass mark. I would recommend doing so. We also have this view online comparison. So you can compare how your system kind of stacked up to other ones. Not as necessary, but if you're interested, go for it. So here is my score, 9,552. That's what we're going to try to improve upon. And I will go ahead and show you that even though I was starting to tune things, 
that score can go lower until you get things perfectly dialed in. It does happen. You see my memory essentially dropped down here and I lost some CPU and graphics. The other baseline that I highly, highly recommend you get is 3D Mark. Now, 3D Mark is going to run in a couple of different ways. It tests your GPU in two separate runs, plus it does a CPU stress test. As you can see right here, 14322, after I diagnosed an issue with my PCIe riser card, I was, was within this number by about five. That level of fluctuation is easy to ignore. You can easily have 25, 30 points of differentiation between runs, and that's not really something to necessarily worry about. So as you can see, we are above average of our score. We can compare our results online just like before. And one of the things that I find interesting here is the statistical information that it grabs as it pertains to temperature and frame rates. So you can see here our GPU temperature is steadily climbing with our default curve. And I'm gonna leverage this in the next video to actually dial this in a little bit better from a temperature standpoint. But you can see we're kind of maxing out temperature wise at 64, 65. And then our CPU over here looks like the highest was 67. You can see exactly what's happening with our frame rates as those kind of things kind of take place as well. So very good level of information, easy to gleam at a glance. And you can also see the GPU clock frequency and the CPU clock frequency as all of these things are kind of occurring. This is very relevant information as you're starting to dial in your performance. These are good things to keep note of and even write down in an Excel spreadsheet, which we will do once we actually get going. So those two benchmarks are what I recommend, the pass mark and time spy right here. This is part of the free version of 3D Mark, which is why you'll see this ran a lot. Now, the last application that I'm going to recommend to you is Cap Frame X. This is a free download and an extremely, extremely useful tool. I want you to make sure that you set up the capture properly. I use Control F12 simply because those are both on the right side of the keyboard, makes it super easy to press. You need to set your capture time to zero. By default, this is a 20 second capture time and that does not help us. So we wanna set this down to zero. Once you set your capture time, you wanna make sure that you don't have any processes running here. If you do and it's not a game, you simply click on it and move it over to the ignore list. Conversely, if your game ends up over here in the ignore list, Select it, press remove from ignore list, and then refresh right there. This will certainly help you make sure that you're capturing the right thing. When it comes time to actually capturing a game benchmark, CapFrameX is indisputably the champ at getting the right information that you're going to need. This right here is Far Cry 5. You'll notice in my benchmarks, I tend to run the same general games. Far Cry 5 is a good test of CPU performance and GPU. Borderlands 3 is very optimized for AMD, but also does pretty well as an indicator of a general game and general performance. And then I do Hitman 3 simply because that is a newer title. It puts a lot of pressure on the GPU itself, given how much texture, scenery, and everything that kind of is going on in that benchmark. To capture the benchmark properly, you got a couple of different options. So this right here is the main menu of Far Cry 5. Come here to options, you'll have the opportunity to run benchmark. But I do recommend modifying the video settings themselves to make sure that everything is kind of dialed in the way that you want. For example, 1920 by 1080, this is 1080p, but you might want to run that at a higher resolution, say 1440p or 4K. These are what you want to dial in. Make sure that you have exactly the numbers you want. Adjusting the refresh rate here as well is something that you can take advantage of. Turning on HDR is too. But the most important part here is quality. You have to make sure that you are running this in a way that's really going to truly tax your system. Even if you don't get the best over 60 kind of numbers, it's still a good indicator to understand the stress that your system is going to be on. So I set everything to their maximum number and then I go ahead and start tuning my system. The desired outcome here is that you are able to achieve 
at least a solid 60 frames a second at these highest quality settings because now you can back down some of the quality settings in order to get the performance and the frame rates themselves up higher. You'll also establish a very good benchmark so that you understand exactly which of these is causing you to have lower frame rates, which of these you can change and sacrifice to get even better frame rates simply by going this route. Once you have everything dialed in, they have the benchmark utility right there. This is extremely important. You cannot really benchmark a game that doesn't have a true benchmark utility built in. You need consistent rendering time and time again, and it is extremely difficult to get that in anything that doesn't have this benchmark option. So we're going to launch the benchmark, and I'm going to put my hand right over my two buttons on the keyboard so that I am ready to capture this as soon as it kicks off. And there we go. Now, because I do use F12, you'll see in the lower corner here, it does pull up the screenshot. I'm going to let this run until the very, very end. And then I'm going to put that same button combination that I use, Control and F12. This will end the benchmark run, and then I'll show you how to examine the results. So there we have it. We've stopped the benchmark. Now you will get results like this. You should take these with a grain of salt, though, in this particular run because it's going through a capture card, and I've already adjusted some things on the system. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring up CatFrameX itself. You can see right here we have Far Cry 5. It doesn't have a comment. I put in exactly what I am doing in a given run here in this comment. The other thing that we need to do is bring it over to analysis and then turn on this range slider function. We need to trim just a little bit from the front and we need to trim just a little bit from the back. And this is gonna be just simply when the benchmark itself started. The more you do these, the more you'll get used to not only this trim, but you'll know exactly how much to trim in both directions. Far Cry 5, for example, runs around 60 seconds for the overall benchmark. So I try to make sure that my cuts give me that length of time consistently throughout. If you're off by a few milliseconds, it's okay. Just try not to be off by more than a second. We press this cut outside button right here. And as you can see, it gave us this comment that says cut. You can go ahead and delete this recording of the older file. This goes basically into the trash area. If you need to get it back, you can always get it back. It's okay. Over here on cut, I would then enter in exactly what we tested, pressing enter. Now I have an exact readout of what was going on. And if I bring this over into the comparison section, you'll see because I have edited the context, context one to custom comment, I now get exactly what was ran. And here is my benchmark bench line that we can compare it against. This gives you excellent points of comparison. It's not just the average frames per second that you need to worry about. You also have to worry about one percentiles and 0.1 percentiles. Why? Those are stutters. Those are interruptions in the actual frames per second that you are going to probably notice and it destroys the overall experience. So we don't want huge amounts of stutter. We don't want huge amounts of fluctuations. Average is great, but if your actual one and 0.1 percentiles are very low, that's not a good thing. So you could have an excellent average and crappy other results and get a bad experience. Let's take a look at all of the baselines that I have ran thus far. So here are the three baselines themselves. You can see Far Cry 5 is performing extremely well. Hitman 3 did well, and Borderlands 3, for what it is worth, also did very well. Each of these games are averaging over 60 frames per second, and my 0.2 percentile is over 60 frames per second as well. That means there's a lower chance that I'm actually going to notice it when using things like VSync and, and those kind of options. This screen, for example, if anything goes below 40, VSync won't work. So I need to make sure everything is above 40 in order to have that good visual quality. So that is going to give me my baselines here. And then I will simply compare as I continue to run benchmarks, as I continue to try to dial things in, I'm going to compare my baseline against all of the options that I have set in 
the system itself so that I know exactly what has worked the best and what necessarily has not worked the best. So there you have it, three benchmarking tools, pass marks, performance test, 3D mark with TimeSpy and CatFrameX. Five individual benchmarks that I will run and help dial in this system. But as you can see, we're starting off with a pretty good baseline and that's exactly what you need in order to further fine tune your system. Next up, we'll be adjusting the temperature, meaning the fan speeds and all of the performance characteristics of those fans and getting the curves just right so that it's not too loud, but yet plenty of air is moving when we need it to. I am The Graying Tech, a gaming insider. If you are into performance gaming PC content like this, check out another one of my videos right there. Or maybe hop over to my motorcycle channel where I do ride-alongs, 360s, and reviews.